Good morning, folks. Here are two L-Wave signatures ripping across the planet. First from the 6.0 in the Gulf of California yesterday, and the second was the 6.3 in Banda Sea. We're having good size aftershocks in the region. We already know the Arctic has record low ice, while the Antarctic inexplicably has record high. Here's a great article on the biodiversity between them. SpaceX got up and away with the ISS cargo, but failed to put a commercial satellite into high enough orbit. Scientists are scrambling to get it higher. It's the rainy season in Vietnam. Remember Forrest Gump? Gogsmark Sweden has been cut off from the world since Sunday due to floods, and folks near Clear Lake, you got a harmful algae bloom. Stay away until further notice, especially your kids and pets. Large blue low pressure system in the middle of the U.S. No relief from the cold for Minnesota, Wisconsin, and North Dakota, but the central and eastern states will take that warmer southern air. Olivia off the Mexico coastline is about done for. Praparoon in the West Pacific becoming strong but missing his compass at the moment. Tropical low 97, now all models show a swift charge into the Atlantic and away from Florida. Let's hope the models are wrong and the same happens to low number 98. Something interesting here as we look at Praparoon with Japan and China to the north and west. The shear coming off creating its own little storms but continuing on to another spinning confined low which itself is shearing off up into Canada and dropping that Fukushima radioactive water right onto the U.S. breadbasket. Coming to the sun, remember we had a CME impact and magnetic storm yesterday. Good news is that despite runaway F2 layer ionization, the F1 critical frequency stayed low. Bad news is these red spikes indicate plasma penetration of our shields in a significant way about 15 hours after the impact. But as we look at the magnetometers, we see what appears to be an enduring disturbance, if not an entirely second event. Electrons plummeting? Yeah, we did indeed have another geomagnetic storm. In fact, we are still slowly coming out of it as of this morning. Tony Phillips, I'm going to get on you two days in a row. Experts all think we're going through the wake and reverberations of yesterday's CME impact. Well, here's yesterday's impact on the right there where you see the speed in yellow spiking to 400, 440 kilometers per second about. Well, looking at the last 24 hours, we see the cause of the second storm came faster, but a whole day later, aka not the same event. You can see that on Soho's three-day solar wind data as well, where the second event was speedier yet managed to get here later. That's because the second impact was the coronal hole stream from the big dark area that faced us three days ago as seen here. Earth footprint is grainy, hiding just behind the limb near departed active regions, close enough to hope that they don't flare. We did get a flare yesterday, but it came not from the right or these central sunspots, but up here over the northeastern limb. An M2 solar flare popped out as seen here in 131 angstroms. That massive spot is turning the limb and will be better classified tomorrow. The dark spot turning away to the right is that coronal hole that struck us last night. The left edge or eastern limb shows a lot of activity just about to turn this way, but before that, look at the size of this next coronal hole turning in with a little guy above. Apart from a few quakes, it's been a calm couple of days. Could be shifting now. Eyes open with no fear. It's a little before 6 a.m. Eastern time, and that's the news, folks. Be safe.